guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're covering the most requested DCC system I've gotten. Now, I get requests all the time for different things, rolling stock locomotives and systems, but this is the most requested DCC system, so I decided we would go ahead and review the ESU Ecos Command Station. Now, this is a really nice, very advanced system, and not only will we be reviewing this, we'll also be reviewing the wireless controller that you can purchase separately. Now the MSRP on this system is $899.95 and the wireless system is $399.95 so we've got a lot of stuff to cover. So much to cover that you won't see everything in this review. Over time we'll be covering some of the other features of this system. It is just so advanced. It doesn't mean that it's complicated but it's very advanced. And I want to go into why I think this system is different than other systems. You see a lot of hobbies with a lot of technical, technologically advanced equipment, but in our hobby, sometimes with a lot of systems, you struggle to even get a backlight. For example, on my MRC Prodigy wireless system, it ran over $500 for everything. I don't even have a backlight. I have to use an LED light if I run at night. You know, if I'm running my passenger cars and I want to see the interior lights, I've got to use an external light. It doesn't even have a backlight. And I noticed this with a few different systems. So DCC systems are expensive anyway, and to not even have a backlight is insane. So for a few hundred more dollars than you pay for a regular system, you've got this technologically advanced system with lots of different options. I'm talking you can take pictures of your locomotives, put them in the system. You can operate switches, map out switches in the system. There is just so much technology crammed in this, but it is amazing. So we've got a lot of stuff to cover. One review is not going to do it. This is more of an intro to this system. You'll see repetitive reviews throughout the unforeseen future about this system, kind of like you've seen me talk about my MRC system for over two or three years now. You'll see me talk about this system and some of the things it can do for years to come. But this review is just going to cover some of the basics, an unboxing, and we'll move right along. So let's take a look at this system in detail and see what you get with this Ecos control system from ESU. Just like with anything I review these days, I'm going to do an unboxing on the video. First time unboxing, I did a little cheat and opened this up, this flap up, but this has not been out of the box yet. So you'll see the system coming out of the box, and you'll get the full custom per service experience. There's the box, I lost some paperwork down here at the bottom. Look at these manuals, guys. I'm talking in depth. Now, like I said, the system's not crazy complicated to get set up and running locomotives. There's just a lot to do later on with switches and control of switches and things like that. So, with every system, you get a power pack, you get the ESU Ecos control system itself, and it's really not that heavy. You've got some plugs in the back and the manual which I've already taken a peek at online it's not that hard to hook up it looks a little complicated here but it's just basically two wires going out or up to four wires with the control track just like everything else you just have some options so you've even got an ethernet cable here and we'll talk about some of the internet capabilities of this later on you've got a battery thing so you have a battery reserve um, four AA batteries so a little battery compartment here, and of course the power pack, and they actually even give you the batteries. So lots of stuff to cover. We're going to go ahead and set this up. I'll do a quick video of how we set it up, and then we'll go into more in-depth details. Now before I go, we're also going to unbox this wireless system right here. This video has the makings to be very long, but I'm going to try my best to keep it short because I don't want to burn you out and we'll cover more details later on. But what you got here is a wireless control system. You've got an ESU uh, digital con command control uh, lanyard for your neck. And then you've got this card here. Now this card will actually plug into the system to make it wireless control and there's instructions for that as well. 
So we've got a lot to do, a lot to cover on this system. It's going to take a while to get this review up. You know, I'm getting this in mid-February. You may not see the review until March sometime, if not later. Alright guys, we've got a lot to get started on, so we're going to get cracking and see some of the details of this system. <clears throat> One thing this system kind of does to a person that's not up on electronics like me is intimidate. But it really is super simple, and I mean super simple, to get started. I'm going to move this power cord out of the way. But as you can see, there's these four pins right here. Simple, they include these little things that snap in. They've got screw posts on the bottom. So what you have is, there's four here, and you've got the one closest to the power is the program track, and the one closest or furthest away from the power is the main track. It's that simple, guys. I'm going to take those wires out of this old MRC system, switch it over, power it on, and you're ready to go. There's a couple other things I'll cover in the quick startup guide, but it's easy. So here's the first screen you get after the setup screen. It's just a quick screen. It shows the uh, system powering on and getting ready to go. But this is literally the first bits of setup. First you go to this little gear here and we're going to put in a new loco. We're going to create manually for the sense of time here. And uh, basically it's going to say the address. Right now I've got 4449 on here so I'm going to click this. I'm going to backspace and put 4449 in so we have that one ready to go and protocol um, I'm not really sure I really for the sake of time I'm gonna skip over some of this you got different images you can select through you can upload your own images we'll get into that a bit later maybe not on this review if we have time we'll get into it to this review it just depends I'm really playing with this by ear the sniffer address isn't a big deal right now. We'll talk about the sniffer later. That allows for you to have another DCC system running with it. And the name is, you know, we can adjust by here. So go ahead and just put 4449 as the name too. And, you know, you've got choices of loco lists. You've got the program track or main track. Again, image options here. Quite a few image options. Now keep in mind ESU is a European uh, company so you've got a lot of European locomotives in here but you can upload your own images which is awesome. So I can just take a good picture of this locomotive and upload it. So for now we'll just pick something. Yeah, We'll just pick this one for now. But you can use your finger as you can see here. No problem if you guys aren't stylus people. So build an image or you can do user defined image like we talked about, limit selection, uh, show all images or whatever. And then you just hit the OK button. And now we have the first locomotive in the system. So you've got different functions. F123, 3 starts uh, 4449, so let's see if this works. It does work. Guys, that was about 10 minutes from start to actually powering on the first locomotive. Really not bad at all. You've got the command system here which starts the locomotive up and we do have moving locomotives. So we are set up and ready to go with our very first locomotive in just 10 minutes. So this system is not nearly as complicated as it looks but we've got a lot of stuff to cover in this system and we'll go into Another thing you think would take some time with this system is setting it up to get on the internet so that it can uh, access the internet and you can get updates and things like that. But it's really simple. First thing we're going to do is after it's start up, you're going to hit this gear button up here. What you'll have is an IP address show up. Um, you sometimes have to click this IP logo over here to get this to pop up. But you get this IP address and what you're going to do is write it down. For me, I've got my trusty Palm Pilot here, so I wrote it down. And you're going to go over to your laptop and plug it in a regular browser web address. And you'll just type it straight in, and I'll show you that real quick. And obviously, after the 5E cable is connected, you'll go and do that, and I'll show you the interface you get on your computer. So as you can see, what you have is my desktop here. I'm going to go ahead and open the 
file, which is an 844 for Matherin. You're going to want any file you open, 190 by 40 picks, and you're going to want those saved in 24-bit uh, bitmap format. Basically, I use paint because it's easy to do, so there is how you basically save a picture. Now, any picture you want, you can make those specifications and you're good to go. Now what I'm going to do is go to that IP address that you saw on the Ecos system. Now you're going to have the Ecos powered on to do this. And you see a bunch of uh, foreign language here. I click on English and then it switches over to English. English, And then you go to Loco Images, User Defined Images. And here you see I've already loaded some pictures that I've tested out. Everything I did worked so far. So I put it in miscellaneous because it was easy to find, but you can categorize it in steam, diesel, or electric. Here's example locomotive. I'm going to browse, and we're going to go to my desktop and pick out that 844 Ecos image that we did. Now it tells you right there, 24-bit colors with bitmap, 190 by 40 pixels. And don't worry about the RGB. I didn't have to worry about it. As you see, it's uploaded now. I go back. To the menu and I see it is uploaded in the images now in order to actually get these to take uh, you have to restart your ecosystem but I just deleted this image because it's already in there so you go to the restart device right there and once the device is restarted you will be able to see those locomotives in our ecosystem now I want to show you those images in the system so if we set up a locomotive new loco here and then create manually takes a minute once you push it but you'll see the user defined image radio button right here now you click that and as you can see I've got some images loaded I've went under the uh, miscellaneous images because it was e I figured it'd be easier to find but as you can see there are my images so if I pick for example the SD70 ACE SD70 ACE for that locomotive number three on number three then what I have now on this left hand side is the SD70 ACE showing up as the logo of course I can put the road number in and all that good stuff up here but you've got that on the throttle and of course you got double throttle so you can put that or different logos on each one but I just wanted to show you guys that so you could see how that's done. It's pretty simple. Again, the reoccurring theme for this ESU command station is that everything I thought that was going to be complicated has been really simple. I'm going to show you some more entries I have. I'm going to go into Edit Loco. I want to show you some of the photographs just to give you more examples of the photographs. So I've got a sketch of the 844 here, some of the ones we had in earlier. But later down the row, we've got... 4141, the George Bush unit. We've got all six UP Heritage units in here. And if you continue on, I've got a real photograph of a model P42, an actual photograph of 844 that I took from the internet and scaled down, the DDA40X sketch. And at the bottom is an Intermountain Norfolk Southern Heritage unit, so it's a real photograph of a model. So that gives you some examples of what you can put in pretty much anything in those parameters I mentioned on the desktop. You can easily put these things in. And like I said, I added all these in about 10 minutes, so it's easy to do. Pretty cool feature. I just wanted to show you some additional models. The whole now with this wireless control, this Ecos control, you get a rechargeable battery pack and the battery charger itself and then this adapter because this recharger comes with an American plug. I'll show you so. the beginning setup of the Ecos control, which is the wireless throttle for this. Basically, you got to pop off the top. It's really easy. Put in some batteries. And you pop the lid back on. Like that. Now these lids come off just by pulling, pushing this little tab in. And pulling up like so. So again, batteries on this end. We get a little negative terminal, positive. 
terminal like so. And that's as simple as it takes, as simple as it gets when you're installing the batteries. No real problem there. A little bit of fidgeting to do to get the lid back on, but no problems at all. So batteries are installed, let's move on to the next step. So as you can see, I've got the Ecos command station flipped over. I've got a piece of foam under it to keep it protected. What you're going to do is take this panel over here. Now keep in mind, this is the top of the command station. So if you're looking at it at this angle, this is the left panel. You're going to pull that off, and then the manual tells you to do something a little strange, which is cut the retaining strips, the retaining strips off of this with like cutters. So we're going to cut this off. The reason is you're going to fit a module in here that will install and it's got to have some space. So Now there's no way I can have a timely review and show you how I just set up the Ecos radio control, but I will show you what to do real quick. Just kind of a real fast recap. What you're going to want to do is put whatever locomotive you want to control in here. You're going to hit this um, button here where it says uh, edit loco it's a little wrench button now here you've got a quick few different uh, menus and you're gonna go to the little wireless control that looks like your ecos control system you pick a symbol you're good there that's about all you can do there and then you're gonna have to assign it to a uh, controller. So assigning a controller, you've got to go back to the gear up top, you've got to pick a radio control that you're using, select it and hit this button here. You will then add whatever locomotive you want with this little plus or minus button here and it'll put it over here. Right now I've got 161 and Amtrak P42 in there so I'll just leave that as it is and now I can control the locomotive. One thing that will keep you from controlling the locomotive correctly is if you have it plugged into this system so you have to clear it out of this system or it'll lock you out. So what I've got now is this controller and the plastic still on but basically got this controller now with the Amtrak. If you see the flashing number there's a problem that basically means that uh, you've got something going on with the um, main station blocking this station but let's just go ahead and check out the functions I'll start it up as you can see or hear the locomotive starting up this throttle controls it go frontward or backwards so gotta wait for it to start up these this version of the P42 has to actually start up before you move it but I did test this out and it does work so Basically, one notch up, and you're moving one. And if you look over here, you'll see the locomotive is moving very, very slowly. So, that's just how that works real quick with the wireless control. It's about as in-depth as I'm going to get into this on this video. We'll go into more in-depth on stuff like this on later videos, but I wanted to show you. It is fairly simple. It's the most complicated step I've done, but now everything's up and running completely, including this wireless control. And it's good to go. you got your throttle here, all your functions here. You can switch off to functions all the way up to 20 on this controller, and you got a nice backlight. So you're good to go. you got an emergency stop button and several other buttons. So I'm going to shut this thing up now. Let's shut it down. But uh, yeah, there's a headlight button and other buttons to operate this thing, and it's pretty understandable. So what I want to show you now is how to access some of the functions of this ESU command station. You can see along the side, the left side of the panel and the right side, if you had another controller loaded, you have 16 functions available, but there's actually more. You're going to go into this little gear button right here. You're going to hit Edit Loco after you've obviously put in your locomotive like we showed you earlier in the video you're going to go to properties you've got three different tabs edit loco properties and advanced advanced has a few options but we're not worried about that right now we're worried about properties in properties you have functions not only functions but you've got symbols you can pick for each function so function for the light 
and then um, it doesn't show it as function zero it shows it as FL but you could pick all these different icons for the light same thing for F1 so it will help you remember what's the function or you know just a catchy little logo instead of having just the F1 it's pretty cool to customize pick these different logos you've got a ton available but that's not really why I'm, why I'm in here why I'm in here is to show you all the functions available so that was F0 through F3 this is F4 through 7 7 or 8 through 11 12 through 15 and 16 through 19 and 20 and 21 so what you actually have is 21 functions available for this command station now as I showed you earlier you have two different throttles available you can load we've only got one loaded right now but I want to turn to the left here and show you a pretty cool function uh, something that's neat about this whole system just showing you how technologically advanced it is right now I've got the daylight 4449 loaded in and I'm not going to power it on or anything to keep the noise down but I can actually get it to move without powering it on so I'm going to put it to th about five speeds or three speed steps here and as the locomotive moves you may have caught that this actual knob moves as well so as I turn it down the knob moves so the knob moves with whatever you put in on the touch screen or you can control it by the knob turning it up to what you want as you see it's at 28 speed steps now but we can change that to 128 or whatever you want in the edit loco settings again right here you've got the uh, 128 or whatever you wish to use as I may have mentioned before so that just shows you one of the cool things about this you've got the quillable whistle which again that's muted but this would or not quillable but a whistle you know you just hit the tab to uh, the throttle there to get the whistle going not really the throttle but it's a uh, joystick so that'll get the whistle going it's a pretty cool function you know versus having to hit a button it kind of gives you another feel to it but that's one other cool feature of this command station one of many and I again will be reviewing even more over time but these are just a few of the cool features that this command station has available on it the last thing you want to do before leaving your ecosystem for the night is to shut down the system now shutting down the system ensures that both locomotives that you're running on your session are saved in the system it ensures a proper shutdown now to do that you see you've got the go button here and the stop button the stop button is an emergency stop button just like on any DCC controller but when you're shutting down the system you're gonna hit it and hold it for about three to five seconds until you see this it says shutting down please wait and then it has another language please wait now what it's doing is shutting down the system and making sure it's saved all the information once it has it says ECOS is shut down you may unplug your ECOS and the stop button will begin to flash so I've got it on a remote system so I'll just hit the power button there now one last thing to note before going into the recap is that this system has 21 functions I wasn't able to find any more than 21 functions maybe there'll be software updates in the future or something to make it to 28 I'm not sure but as of currently there's 21 functions available in the system so with that said we've covered a lot of stuff let's go ahead and recap and get this review finished so my final thoughts on the ECOS command station and this wireless controller are that it's a great product all my fears I had were put to rest very quickly for example I was concerned that it was going to be too complex it was too intimidating it was actually quite the opposite it was easy to set up 10 minutes from the box to running trains so no problem there some of the things they do make it easy to operate and you very user friendly the other concerns I had was that it was going to be too large so it's not too large it fit on my little shelf very nicely uh, I was concerned that it wouldn't operate with MTH uh, locomotives and it works fine with MTH locomotives I was worried that it wouldn't work with my MTH DCS commander it works fine with that so overall no problems at all with this system I was actually very upset to know that I had let intimidation rule so long and I had heard about this product people have been asking for reviews and I was scared to dive in but now that I have dived in it's a pretty cool system and a lot of technology in this system for the price I mean like I said before, DCC uh, control systems sometimes don't even have backlights, and this thing is just amazing. Speaking of price, online retailers, 
um, you guys had asked me in some messages to find an online retailer that had these items in stock and had discounts. I found trainworldonline.com has them in stock and has a pretty deep discount off the system um, and also off the wireless controller so you can go there if you're looking for something that's in stock. There's other uh, retailers too that don't have them in stock but can order them from ESU. I did contact ESU and found out they were available to be shipped to retailers that are in their dealer network. So that covers about everything I can think of, guys. Thanks for dealing with this long review. I hope I covered some great points for you, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.